when I was very young. I grew up in Mobile, Alabama. I have about four brothers and one sister. My parents always told us that we were very, very fortunate and that they were able to provide us with education. They were able to give us aspirations. And I thought that in so doing, we had a responsibility to return everything that we got back to the people we got it from. And those people basically are our people.
Some people said no, but many of these people said yes to us. We had support from Mary and Barry, who was the chairman of the school board. We had the support of the school board. We had the support of George Rowe and Loretta McKenzie and Vincent Reed, who were all in the school system then. We found that there was a building called Western. We wanted that building, and all of those people came together to help us. That was the beginning of a major transition for us. We were moving from a building on Georgia Avenue, which is now called Celebrity Hall, or the Black Hole, <laughs> into a school building where we would house, for the first time, a full academic program, a visual arts program, a dance program, a theater program, and we were adding a music curriculum for the first time. And then, some problems started. Our first faculty art exhibit was put up by Billy Harris, Ed Love, and Ron Anderson. And in that art exhibit, there were some sculptures, sculptures, much like the sculptures that you see in the lobby today. And there was a little old lady who worked for the school system. Some people didn't like those pieces of sculpture. And we were demanded to take them down. And we said, but no, that is censorship. <laughs> and they said, but yes, you will. And uh, as a result, because I was the director of the school at that time, I lost my job. And then, things began to change. But the school did not fall, nor did it fail. I went on to get married to have a baby, to do a television show, to become the chairman of the Arts Commission. We had a new principal who was here for a very long time, Maurice Eldridge. Who gave a, a real stability to this school for 10 whole years. I left Washington to become the director of the theater in Cleveland, Ohio. From there, I, I went to New York to uh, direct and to choreograph. My career took me to Europe, to China, to Russia. It took me around the world. Sometime thereafter, I came back to Washington, D.C. and began to choreograph professionally here. Uh, that allowed me to work in California as one of the choreographers of the series Fame and uh, for Miss. Alan, who was a student of mine who became my boss. And uh, finally, I ended up uh, as, the, as a member of the faculty at Howard University where I'm coordinating the music theater program. My most recent, uh, uh, I guess, achievement is the choreography of a video which most of you may have seen, Melba Moore's Lift Every Voice and Sing, with uh, Stevie Wonder and Neil Warwick and Stephanie Hill. We're back. We're back here at Ellington. What can we see now, Mike? Well, we have seen hundreds of young people who have had an opportunity to go to college, to Pratt, North Carolina School of the Arts, California Institute of the Arts, Juilliard, Howard University, Yale, Spelman, Peabody, into the Ailey Company, into many of the major dance companies, theater companies across the country. And I see a building that has a magnificent theater. I see a building that has a horrible cafeteria and no gym and no science labs and not enough
think that is very much intact as witnessed by the class of 1990 and their families. You have become a part of this dream now. And one of the finest examples of you, as has been mentioned earlier in the program, is Leonard Worley. I mention him specifically because embodied in this young man is a part of our history. His mother went here. His uncle was one of our first graduates, Skipper Driscoll, and he was our very first student to get into Juilliard. That was 27 years ago. But you know, dreams are never completely fulfilled unless the dreamers remain clear-eyed, unless the dreamers become their own worst critics, unless the dreamers constantly work at becoming better. As a school community, and we've heard much about the school community from the very erudite speech of Ms. Raza, we need to examine every aspect of ourselves, and we need to build on the results of that scrutiny. We need to ask if the school board and the superintendent are giving us the tools we need to do our jobs. Do we have all of the personnel that we need? Do we have all of the equipment and supplies that we need? Are our classrooms and science labs and performance spaces adequate? Does the superintendent and the, do the superintendent and the school board understand our mission here though? And then just working with them on a one-to-one -one basis. 
I would like to say um, special messages to them, but for fear that I would leave out someone, I'm not going to say that. So with my heartfelt love and appreciation to you, I hope that you will succeed in life and that one day you'll come back and let me know of your successes. With love and gratitude to you, I remain faithfully yours, Dr. Todd.